For Best Music Coach, my name is Dan, and you are watching a guitar teacher's reaction live and in real time to the Minecraft of Beta original soundtrack. Now, I have never heard this music before, not once, never, ever, ever, which means none of this is rehearsed and all of my comments and observations are off the top of my head in the moment. Please hit like, subscribe, hit that little notification bell, and you can join this channel and become a member to support what we are doing. You can check out our number one best-selling music books in the description below, as well as get 50% off your first music lesson. Now we are live. We have some people joining us in the chat. Hey, chat. How is it going? Good morning. Let's get this thing rocking and rolling with Key. Now, before we do that, let me know in the comments what you think about this stream, what you think about my reaction, what you think about the music, and what you would like to see next. I don't respond to all comments, but I read every single one of them. Let's get this going. Key. So something to watch for is even on some of these more atmospheric tracks, really listen to how things change and how things evolve. Because there's a lot going on. And it's more complex than what you might think it actually is. This is called Alpha. The way this is mixed is very interesting. There's actually three pianos. There's a low part, high part, and a middle part also on the left if you're wearing headphones. Oh, beautiful strings. Wire. Sounds like 
turn very far back, or maybe that string's I'm mistaken. That's a choir. Or some sort of synth. Interesting. I mean a synth. Choir synth. Oh, beautiful.
Yes. Ooh, this sounds very Swedenish. Swedeny. Sweden is my favorite song. Partially because I've only played survival mode. So you hear it you hear it quite a bit there. So this isn't actually the song Sweden, but it's taking motifs from Sweden. Okay, next one we have is called Dead Voxel. very slowly building to something. Yeah, the bass coming in now.
Oh, love it. Coming in on the left side. We're on the right side now. Listen to that reverb, man. Chat, can you confirm that this song plays when you're in the nether? Okay, so according to chat, that's a yes. So this amount of reverb does give you that feeling of when you're in the nether. It's this really large space. And it gives you that feeling of scale. Reverb gives you a feeling of depth and of distance. Wow. Okay. Really incredible piece of music, not only in its buildup, but then also in the execution of starting from basically nothing and then slowly, 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 slowly building into something. Quick shout out and thank you to Alessandro C uh, for the super chat. So once you finish with the beta album, all that remains is the three songs from the update Aquatic, the Nether update OST, and the Caves and Cliffs OST. Yes, which I think Lena or Lena. Uh, Rain did compose on those, so can't wait to do those. Looking forward to 2022. Me too. Thank you so much for your super chat. Thank you for your support. Let's keep this thing going with Blind Spots. Notice how the piano is going right, left, right, left, right, left. Beautiful swell coming here. The bass has evolved from the beginning to now. It's actually playing a pattern.
compassion coming in now. Very interesting right there. Go through. Soft and louder. Now we're starting to get the full picture. like a 30 second note early or maybe it's 16th note early very interesting right there i think that may be one of the first times we've heard c418 play with the time i know we heard lena rain play with the time a lot toby fox a little bit this may be the first time we've heard c418 play with time in this way where everything is not exactly lining up with where you would think it would be in terms of one, two, three, four, the ands, or the es, or the uhs, the beats, the beat divisions, or the subdivisions. Something I'm really loving about this OST is that it's getting a little bit more involved than Volume Alpha. So this is vo Minecraft Volume Beta. In Minecraft Volume Alpha, yes, there were moments where there was a lot going on, but for some reason I can't quite put my finger on it because I only listened to Alpha one time. But it seems that there is a little bit of an evolution in the complexity of the arrangements of what's going on a little bit more um, fun in the mixing ideas and where things are happening. Like, you know, those pianos bouncing back and forth between the left and the right. This next one is called Flake.
interesting sound. Sounds almost like a rubber squeak. You know what it sounds like? Sounds like when you take a balloon. Have you ever taken a balloon? Oh, chat's now saying balloon time. There you go. Have you ever taken a balloon? Oh, that's really odd. Love it. It's like a Charlie Pluth moment. He's like, yeah, so I sampled this beehive. That was wild. So I think we're definitely seeing an artistic evolution on the part of C418 in this soundtrack. Because when you compare this to volume alpha, alpha was a little bit more restrained. It was, I mean, especially if that was C418's first major soundtrack chat, maybe you can fact check me on that. I actually don't know. You can see that the artistic evolution here it is a real thing like the freedoms that are being taken there's this expansion in the use of different techniques instrumentation arrangement sampling a balloon sampling a balloon genius to do it sounds awesome but i don't think we would have seen something like that on volume alpha so there's definitely this almost there's the inhale on volume alpha and then this this is the exhale on volume beta and on the exhale there's this artistic expansion that's happening here where we're seeing many new and different and exciting things the next one is called moog city 2 or moog city 2 i should say All right, after I give that whole thing this sounds straight out of uh, Alpha because it sounds like Moog City. Very alpha feeling here. No resolution.
Okay, so what's interesting on these, and I think you might have noticed right there, there was a point where there was two piano chords and then I went like this, is because I was expecting a third or fourth piano. I was expecting one more piano chord there for a resolution and it wasn't there. Very interesting. Great job faking me out. Love it when I get faked out, get to hear something new, something I didn't expect. And a very interesting evolution in this atmospheric thing. Now, I don't completely recall Moog City 1 or the first Moog City, so I can't give you a direct comparison, but I do know it was similar because I do rec recognize the sound. Also, the arpeggiations. This next one is called Concrete Halls. used. So I have a theory why this is called the concrete halls is because different types of reverb that you use have different names. So this reverb that we use right now is called large and 
right. So we can change the reverb, make it sound a little less reverby, like this, or we can make it sound really, really long, like a big reverb. And this is what I'm saying is that when you use reverb like this, doesn't this give you a feeling of space? So that's reverb. Let's keep it rocking and rolling. Make sure y'all can still hear me and go on with our next track, which is called Biome Fest. Oh, so Concrete Halls is also a reference to Nether Fortress. Interesting. So I didn't know that, but now at least you got a little understanding of reverb there. slowly building. This reminds me a little bit of Celeste.
Okay, so I do want to address something that came up in the chat while we were listening to this last piece. Uh, someone asked, who do you think is better, uh, C418 or Toby Fox? And it almost doesn't matter if you know these people or not as composers. I think the point is when we judge things by better, there are certain metrics where we can judge someone as being a better musician than someone else. Uh, well, not better musician, but we can judge someone, for example, we can say um, piano player one plays faster than piano player two. They have, you know, better facility with the technique. That's something we can judge. We can say that uh, piano player one is better at sight reading than piano player two. But then to say who's a better artist is a very interesting question because better lies in the eye of the beholder, just like whatever music you listen to is your favorite music, it's okay to listen to it and to love it. We can say the same thing for musicians because it's art. Now, art is subjective. You can't judge art. Art is only good or bad if you think of it as being good or bad. And my opinion of what's good or bad might be different from your opinion of what's good or bad. So who's the better composer? Well, you ask 100 people, you might get 100 different answers. That's a possibility. So whenever we see these polls, like 100 best guitar players of all time, it's like, okay, 100 best guitar players of all time, but by whose metrics? How are we qualifying that so-and-so is a better guitar? Are we saying the most influential guitar player? Okay, then we can have a conversation about that. But there's specific metrics that we can talk about in relation to music where we can judge someone's had more impact, is better, this, that, the other. However, for most of the time in art, it's like, okay, well, who's better? I don't know. Who do you like more? Who do you think's better? That's what matters. Let's keep it going. Next is called Mutation. That being said, I may do some videos in the future like top five Led Zeppelin licks, so bear with me while I also do that because those work really well with YouTube search algorithms. Okay, it's called Mutation. <laughs> This is very alpha. I think this is actually a motif from alpha. Yeah. Yeah, this is a motif or the full theme. I can't recall which.
very calm, very peaceful, a lot of alpha content in there in terms of the arrangement, the instrumentation, and also the notes, and the motifs. This next one is called Haunt Musky. Backward sounds in there. Interesting. Oh, fascinating. Love that transition. so tasteful. Wow, whoa, 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 whoa. listen to that little sound. Oh, there it is again. Love it.
Agreed, Miguel. Agreed. So Miguel in the chat made a comment that C418 uses a lot of weird sounds or sounds we don't typically hear or makes some very interesting artistic choices, but it still is incredibly listenable. Like you'd sit around, you'd do your homework to it. You could hang out to it. It could be a rainy day. You could just stare out the window and watch the rain to it if that's your thing. Uh, incredible. Awesome. The next one is called warmth. Now I don't know too many of the nether tracks because typically I'm running away from things trying not to die in the nether. So typically it's just a rush of adrenaline and I'm not listening to the music. building. That sound the that sounds like a pick being dragged across a guitar string.
Very interesting. How this is walking the line between creepy and comforting. A lot of the volume alpha songs that we listen to are very comforting. They're sort of warm. They feel like home. Doesn't sound like a bunch of zombies and creepers are running after you, trying to blow you up and or eat you and turn you into a zombie. Whereas here, like with what we just listened to, there was this, in warmth, this element of, there was an element of danger that you could hear in the music with those different sounds and, you know, the creaky guitar thing. The, very, very interesting that as Minecraft evolved as a game, we can also hear the evolution in the music as well. This next one is called Aria Math. Thank you for the super chat, Jesse Spangler. Oh, excuse me, it's called Floating Trees. I apologize. I don't know if any of you have ever gotten a massage in your life, but this is what the music sounds like. And there's salt crystals. There's like salt on the walls. Oh, now this is different.
Oh, love that. I especially love the little ideas where it's just like four notes and the last note just held out for a really long time and then just faded into the background of noise. This next one is called Aria Math. All right. Sounds like some sort of steel drum. Or maybe it's one of those things where it's a steel drum, but it's um, concave instead of convex, and you play on it. That's also possible. Huh. So right, that top note, the bop, bop, that is a steel drum, right there. That's steel drum, sure, but the main drum we're hearing is not a sort of Caribbean style steel drum, it's something different. Yes, hand pan, one shot, sounds closer to it. Let me Google that real quick. Yeah, hand pan's what I'm talking about. Exactly. Yep, concave. Whereas the steel drum's convex. So it also does sound like there is steel drum in it, but it was just being used for accent notes. That sounds like a Chinese instrument. Not sure what the name would be. Or someone's having fun with a banjo and doing something in the mixing. Oh, I love. I love the way this moves forward.
This is called Kyoto. That flute sound is a sakuhachi, or it's just a synth. Yeah, it sounds maybe like a flute patch that's modified to sound more like a sakuhachi. I think I'm saying that right. I just love the textures. Like if you've ever eaten a salad that has like crunchy things in it and salty things and sweet things, you get the texture, the texture of everything coming together. I know I described two things with taste, but the texture of this music, it feels so good to the ears. Super chat shout out to Jacob King. Jacob, thank you so much for your support. Jacob says, lots of folks seem to like the Calamity Mod OST. Might be a good idea to add it to the roster. Also, love the reaction of it as well, Jacob. I got it written down right now, and we're going to add that as soon as this stream is over. We're going to add that to the list for going out to votes. Thank you so much also to Jacob King for becoming a member. Awesome. You get custom emojis and all sorts of things when you become a member. So thank you so much for your support there. Let's keep it rocking and rolling with Ballad of the Cats.
Thank you, Dr. Toon, for your super chat. Thank you for your support. Dr. Toon says, another great review. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Slowly building now. The song is still happening. Though I can't hear anything. Very interesting end of the song there, too. And quick shout out to our newest member, Jacob King. You can also go check out in the community tab. There's a bunch of member only messages and questions and soon to be polls that you can check out over there. So make sure you go and check those out. I do want to hear from you. This next one is called Beginning Two. Interesting. It's our motif from Alpha. I think it's also the, essentially the menu theme this motif is from. So for, I'm calling it a motif because I haven't heard the whole thing yet.
Okay, next up we have Taswell. Now, I didn't play it before. I do have a little bit of a cold today, so I'm starting to get a little bit of a brain fog. So please excuse me if you're wondering why I've made a couple of mistakes so far in the stream. That's why the show must go on. Here we go, Taswell. Very interesting sounds happening. Interesting. So chill. I oh, love those little piano. Look at that. There's so much going on, just like simmering under the surface.
Now we're hearing those arpeggios a little more. Oh, beautiful. Love those chords. We didn't skip this. <laughs> Thank you, chat, for keeping me on point. Okay, so I absolutely love this for a couple of reasons. Number one, the evolution of what was going on from the sort of first half of the song to the second half of the song. Sorry, it's like 20 seconds. I'm going to be quiet. I got so excited. Okay. Now it's done. So, love, love, love Taswell. Thank you, chat, for keeping me on point and having us go back and listen to that. I really, really enjoyed. And something that I want to bring up is the use of harmony that C418 employs. It would be very easy to go in and just sort of do major minor chords and walk through it. But with C418, is really a master of is breaking out of that whole major minor thing and going with add chords, going with sus chords, going with power chords. And what that does is it provides a different feeling for the melody because in pop music, for example, we don't typically get this sort of combination of add and sus chords and things of that nature. And what ends up happening is it really does give you a feeling of a different world because it's not combinations of harmony that you're used to hearing, but it's done so often throughout both alpha and now beta that it really does create a separate musical world, almost like the whole Minecraft world is a separate world from our own, virtual though it may be. This next one is called Dryton. And yes, the sus chord is a suspended chord.
can't quite pin down what that very soft sound is in the back. It almost sounds like someone rustling paper or cardboard. This is slowly starting to build. Now you can notice it's building because certain instruments are getting a little louder. A little louder. Interesting. This is a suspended chord being arpeggiated. Well, it was. Sounds like our hand pan again. Interesting. We're playing with time again. listen for is that little sound in your right ear you can hear the reverb above it in your left ear a lot of times reverb or delay of a sound can actually be panned separate from where the sound is and that increases your perception of how important the sound is because you hear it more Song, that'll sound oh, it's building up now. Actually reminds me of Doom, funnily enough. <laughs> There's a couple spots in the Doom soundtrack. There's Doom Eternal. Where it was like a little on two and four or on the ands, depending on where the actual beat is here.
I'm gonna say it's the Ands. This is guitar and hand pan and piano. And some kind of synth. More guitar coming in on the right sounds like. So you hear that squeaky sound. That squeaky sound is made when a guitarist moves their fingers from point A to point B and their fingers stay attached to the strings. Let's see if I can do it. I spend so much time trying not to do it. Let's see if I can do it on purpose. Yeah, there you go. You hear that little, that little, right there. That sound right there. So that's also called string squeak, string squeak. And in general, guitarists try to avoid them, but in this case, they were actually used artistically and percussively. Very interesting. Let's keep it rocking and rolling with the end. Now, buckle in, folks, because this is a 15 minute and four second long song. song is playing. There it is. Can you hear it? So we're getting a little bit of our very first motif here. Oh, wow.
hear that synth getting detuned now. There's a lot going on, it's just very quiet. Listen to the sides, to the front. Starting to build, getting louder. slowly getting louder. This does sound like Sweden chat. Oh yeah, this is Sweden. there again. Oh, interesting adding that dissonance in there. Well, 
That's a lot of reverb. Now, so we'll add that single bass note. Things are playing backwards now. That's the sound when you plug uh, an instrument into a amplifier or a audio interface. Pleb Bora, was that big bass note the first note of Minecraft that we heard? That big bass note that happened, because it seemed symbolic.
That was a very interesting sonic experience. The clear buildup to that single bass note. And we're working on a fact check right now that that one bass note was the first note of Minecraft. Not sure on that yet. Hopefully we'll get back to you. A very interesting experience to hear the different themes from the different songs that we've heard previously being brought into this and then up to this finale of this one single note. Now, I do, pl I do play survival mode of Minecraft. I've never gotten to a point where you're fighting a dragon or anything like that. But it does seem to me like that wasn't maybe the boss fight, maybe something after a boss fight. But the use then after that sort of singularity moment with that bass note where it almost felt like the final thing or returning to where you started which is a story a common story a common theme in stories after that with the reversed sounds the extra reverb and then finally at the end those interesting almost record-like sounds the skipping very fascinating let's go on to the next one which is called chirp oh this is different Sounds like it's being played on a record. Okay, so this is in-game music discs that we find, correct chat? Some wacky bossa. This sort of reminds me of the in-game songs from Persona that we listen to. Yes, it is. Letty G, you're, you're correct that it was not a perfect boss. This is called Wait.
interesting is that bass line is sort of like the reminiscent of the um, menu theme. For me, this is motifs off of our sort of menu theme or variations of the theme. But it's taking little fragments of the melody. That was a lot of fun. This next one is called Melohi. like the old SNES uh, synth right there. You can hear it in A Link to the Past. Oh, God. Ah, oh, the time. Ah, oh, it's delicious. Oh my gosh! Okay, so why was I laughing? I was laughing because as musicians, we spend so much of our time practicing and trying to play on time and on beat and like have everything line up so perfectly. And so 
within that song, the time was not always lining up, and where it wasn't lining up, it was hilarious. It is perfect. There's great humor in that. All right, this next one is called Stall. Is this the same key as Black Pan- uh, Pink Panther theme? I don't have perfect pitch. Does anyone in the chat have perfect pitch? And this is the same key as Pink Panther theme. A jazz solo on a recorder. <laughs> I love it. Can I tell you that straight up, this has been my favorite song this entire OST? Like, oh my gosh. And then the guitar solo, it's just like, oh my gosh. I think that if you're a musician, especially if you've done jazz and you've spent so many hours of your life practicing arpeggios and scales and navigating your way through changes, and then you hear a recorder solo like that that just like does not care, and then you hear a guitar solo that equally does not care it is it's it's just gorgeous it's just beautiful you know in music especially in improvisation we're always well in any art form we're always talking about trying to get back to sort of a childlike innocence of creativity and for me that's it i love it this next one is called 11 This song makes me think of love. Like it just, I feel love when I hear this song. So beautiful. Next one is called Ward.
哎，哎，哎。Interesting. Okay, now I do have a cold today. I've got a little, little bit of brain fog. Looks like I made what will hopefully be my last mistake of this stream, and I skipped strads. We're going to go back and listen to that now. Sorry for whoever's doing the time codes. <laughs> Here we go. So they're playing the melody, that's the steel pan. Underneath, holding those arpeggios down, that's the hand pan. And this is dead pan.
sound happening in there. Sounds digital. Very interesting. Maybe an old printer. Yeah, printer, hard disk drive. Agreed, Kaz. Yeah, it might be a hard disk. Okay, now we're going to go to mall. I'm really enjoying these discs here. This next one is called Blocks.
Oh, this is so interesting. Playing with time again. That plucked chordophone sound we're hearing sounds almost like that song we heard in uh, the sound we heard in Kyoto, but with like reverb on it, less high end. Maybe it's a different sound. Maybe it's the same one with more effects on it. Beautiful resolution on the major triad there. Very interesting. Very interesting track, fun. Let's check out the next one called Faw or Far. Thank you. 
Oh, interesting. Listen to that flute sound. Very cool. Listen how it ends. Hey, this might be our kalimba here that we were waiting for. This is a kalimba patch, something like it. Oh yeah, this is definitely a variation on the main theme. with a tremolo or a really fast phaser on it. Now the song's over. I think what was really interesting on that last tune there was the texture that was created by all those plucked and struck instruments. A very interesting, almost mechanical, clock-like feeling. This next one is going to be our last one for today, and it is called Intro.
What a beautiful and poised way to end this soundtrack. Incredible, incredible. My final reaction and final word is a true masterpiece. Incredible use of harmony, incredible use of melody, rhythm. And yeah, you say, well, Dan, that's just about everything. Well, guess what? Just about everything was very masterful. I loved the extra discs. They were so much fun. That recorder solo was probably my favorite part just because it was just so whimsical and fun to listen to. This has been incredible. Thank you all for supporting this channel. You can click like, subscribe, hit that notification bell down there. You can join this channel, become a member. We already had a member join today. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much to all our super chatters so far this stream. I really, really appreciate your support. In the description below, you can get 50% off your first music lesson for any instrument. You can also check out our best-selling music books. Please let me know in the comments what you thought about this reaction, what you thought about this soundtrack, and of course, what you would like to see next. This is going to be our last stream of 2021. Thank you all so much for this incredible year. Our goal is to get 5,000 subscribers by the end of this year, and we're on track for about 11 or 12. So thank you all so much for your positive support. Thank you for the phenomenal year. Chat, thank you so much for joining me on this incredible journey. If you're watching this video later, thanks so much for watching. Hey, Five Pebbles, thank you so much for that super chat. Everyone have a phenomenal, phenomenal rest of the year, and I'll see you guys in 2022.